what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out ranking the 13 versions of randy orton from worst to best by none other than wrestling flashback this video alone on his end is 34 minutes long so this is gonna be uh quite a long video so sit back and relax and we're gonna watch this together i wanted to check this out um since you know i reported i want to say uh I think it was uh earlier last like maybe this weekend or whatnot um uh, that uh there are reports going around that randy orton may uh may have to retire soon from wwe the doctors advise him not to come back to wrestling so you know i wanted to really check this video out you know just in case if that is a situation and randy orton is done and we may not see him in a wrestling ring for quite some time or if ever again that i wanted to go through and check out some of the best versions of randy orton that we have seen over the years the dude is a future hall of famer is not even a question um and he deserves to be admired and, and and look at his uh just like his transformation from where he started to where he was um when it was all said and done so hopefully that isn't the case hopefully he is able to come back to give us one more run if he can't i understand you know his health is more important than anything wrestling related so we're gonna check out the best versions of him and some of the worst versions of randy Orton, man but this should be a good one appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel y'all sit back and relax because this is gonna be a long video let's do this thing one two is this on one, two, ad blocker is this on from legend killer to legend, Randy Orton's longevity and tenure is unmatched. He has remained a constant in WWE for over 20 years. Wrestling was in his blood and destiny was in his future. It's often been said that if you could build a professional wrestler from the ground up, you would get Randy Orton. Facts. We'll find out just why that statement rings true today as we look back and rank the various personas and numerous different versions of Randy Orton. Number 13, Rookie Orton, 2002 mm. to 2003. Orton's wrestling career began in WWE's development territory ohio valley wrestling having spent two years learning the craft he was eventually promoted to the wwe main roster in april 2002 his first matches saw him wrestle the likes of hardcore holly test and lance storm it's really it's fire! Fire! Naturally, Orton was quite rough around the edges when mm -hmm. he first debuted. However, he was put in matches against experienced wrestlers who helped show him the ropes. One of the first obstacles Orton had to conquer was his nerves. His opponents could tell how nervous Randy was based on how he looked walking to the ring. Hardcore Holly was the first to notice and offered Orton valuable advice. The highlight of Orton's first year in the WWE came when he wrestled The Undertaker for the Undisputed Championship. Taker was incredibly giving during the match, offering Orton a big chance to shine. So Which much so crazy. that after the match, Vince McMahon questioned the dead man's decision to give the rookie so much offense. The Undertaker! The Undertaker! Orton jumped ship to Raw in September of 2002, but almost... A and shout out to The Undertaker trying to, you know, get 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 him over, you know what I'm saying? You know, giving him that type of rub with giving him so much offense on him. You know, that that's always dope to see that The Undertaker possibly did see something like, okay, this guy got some time. Let me, let me try to make him look good. That is also a good you know uh i guess you could say a part of being a good veteran seasoned wrestler is allowing your opponent to get in some good offense on you as well you don't want to bury your opponent you know especially if it's not a situation where you're trying to build up a uh, future talent but potentially you don't want to bury them you want to make them look good as well so immediately suffered a shoulder injury randy stayed on television though and appeared on raw live from montreal in this thing where he cut his first heel promo unlike bret hart randy orton will be back thank you <laughs> Over the next few months, Orton appeared in RNN segments, mm -hmm. giving frequent updates on his condition. These skits allowed Orton to slowly develop as a heel, giving fans just enough reason to dislike him. The injury proved to be a blessing, as it yeah. allowed Orton to shed his initial white meat babyface rookie persona in favor of a more cocky, arrogant character that Which was soon works. ready to take further advantage of his third generation heritage. Number 12, WWE and United States Champion, 2017 to 2018. After Orton's feud with Bray Wyatt in 
in 2017, Orton was used to try and help establish Jinder Mahal as a viable wow. WWE wow. champion. Orton lost the title to Mahal at Backlash in a massive <laughs> upset love that. shock fans. I, I love when he threw him like that and he over-rotated. He hit the yeesh ready. <laughs> He's like, my bad. But this right here was sickening. Oh, my God. Ooh, this was so stupid. Orton tried his best to get Mahal over he as tried. champion, but it, it was always work. going to be hard for the audience to buy someone as world champion, who had largely been an enhancement talent <laughs> for the majority of their WWE career. After losing three times to Mahal, three. Orton feuded with Rusev. During this feud, Orton once again highlighted his ability to hit the RKO out of nowhere, doing so numerous times in a variety what? of different ways. <laughs> English from the second what? Love it. At the start of 2018, Orton looked to capture the only title he had yet to win in WWE, the United States Championship. Orton won the belt at Fastlane, defeating Bobby Roode. This made Orton the 18th Grand Slam champion in WWE history. But Crazy. the Viper only held the championship for a month, as Orton would lose yet another title to Jinder Mahal, this time in a fatal four-way match at WrestleMania 34. I forgot that was a thing. I'm so... Yeah, this WrestleMania was not good. I forgot this was a thing. I actually... I literally forgot he lost it. I forgot this was a thing. Yeah, this WrestleMania was... Colossus! Cover! The hole! It was a shame to see Orton lose the title so quickly, as it would have been great to see such a top-level main eventer like Randy elevate the belt just as rival John Cena had done on... Yeah. Ye yeah. <laughs> Not to quote uh, my boy LA Knight, but yeah. <laughs> Raw in 2015. All in all, the one year period from the spring of 2017 to 2018 was one to forget for Orton. He had little to sink his teeth into character or storyline wise. The one saving grace was the fact that he was able to win a title he was yet to capture. But Orton's US Championship reign was so short it never really had a chance to get off the ground. I literally Number forgot 11, that he was the youngest world champion. I forgot he was the <laughs> United States champion. That's how quick that title reign was. For. Fresh off his highly successful reign as the Intercontinental mm -hmm. Champion, the WWE believed Orton was ready to take the next step in becoming a main event player. After yep. winning a 20-man battle royal on Raw, Orton became the number one contender for Chris Benoit's World Heavyweight Championship. The two clashed at SummerSlam in a stellar match, where yep. Orton captured his first world title, becoming WWE's youngest ever world champion in the yeah. process. The youngest world champion in WWE history. At just 24 years old and with only two years under his belt on That's the main crazy, roster, it bro. begged the question as to whether Orton was truly ready to be world champion. And while even Randy agrees it was too soon, the way he was booked as champion certainly didn't help matters. Things started mm. off well with a brilliant rematch versus Benoit on Raw that was followed by Orton being kicked out of Evolution mm -hmm. in a famous segment. <laughs> Randy then cemented himself as a babyface the next week by spitting mm -hmm. in the face of Triple H yeah. in a classic <laughs> moment. But Orton lost the world title to Triple H at Unforgiven. Yeah. Despite putting up a strong fight, and while losing the title after just one month was bad enough, Orton's rematch at the 2005 Royal Rumble added insult to injury. Not just because of the loss, but due to the way Orton was defeated. <laughs> Randy was beaten cleanly after trying to use the game's patented sledge hammer. Yeah. Orton's babyface run had been a bust. He had lost the killer instinct that made him such a great villain mm -hmm. as the legend killer. While his fellow Evolution member Batista had begun to get over with the fans more organically. Orton has always said how much he prefers playing the role of a heel. And perhaps his initial failed babyface run has something to do with that. Especially given... Yeah, I, and I believe there was some... He was having some backstage issues uh, after they pushed him, I want to say. Uh, that that was part of the reason why they decided to take the belt off of him so quickly. Um, he was having some type of backstage issues or whatnot when it came to like management and stuff like that. So, uh, I believe Orton himself said he wasn't ready to have that responsibility yet. He just wasn't, you know. But uh, hey, he still has that. You know, he was still able to achieve that in such a quick fashion, I mean, which lets you know that how big. Uh, Vince and WWE, they were really, you know, counting on this guy to be the future for them, so.
given how much it paled in comparison to his previous heel run, as well as the subsequent one that was to follow. Number 10, Wyatt Family Member, 2016 to 2017. Autumn returned from injury in the summer of 2016, what? becoming a member of the SmackDown roster. At that year's SummerSlam, he featured in a memorable but controversial match against Brock Lesnar. Yeah. The ending to this match was so violent, it even had Chris Jericho wondering if the finish was... I remember watching that live and I was like, wait a minute. Yo, he busted him open hard. Like that was a hard, hard way bust. Like he busted him open legit. There was not, not enough time for him to blade. That was legit. I was like, holy. I was concerned because he was leaking. Like he was leaking. Like <laughs> you see right here, it's just pouring. I was like, oh my God. What the fuck? Was planned or not? Leading to an altercation between Y2J and Lesnar backstage. From there, Orton began a feud with Bray Wyatt, which eventually led to Orton joining the Wyatt family. Yeah. Randy Orton. Orton's addition to the group wasn't really a good fit, although no. we did manage to capture the tag titles during this time. Fans were more eager to see the moment Orton eventually turn. Turn, Wyatt. yeah. Orton's objective was to destroy the Wyatts from the inside. This plan fit his character, as it's only ever a matter of time before the Viper but, strikes after all. However, yeah. this storyline just dragged on for too long, since Orton and Wyatt were booked to go all the way up until after WrestleMania. During his time in the Wyatt family, Orton was able to elevate Luke Harper. However, mm -hmm. WWE subsequently failed to capitalize on Harper's momentum. Yeah. Yeah. Orton's turn on Bray was done in unique circumstances as Orton burned down the Wyatt family compound resulting in a cool looking visual. Now it was a cool visual. Unfortunately, the payoff to the feud saw Orton and Wyatt wrestle two bizarre matches. First at WrestleMania 33, where Orton beat Bray for the WWE Championship. Then came the House of... Which was fucking... We're not even going to talk about that whole Bray situation. Y'all know how I feel about that. Horrors match at Payback. This concept had potential, but it wasn't executed well and absolutely died in front of the live audience who were forced to watch most of the match on the Titan Tron. Yeah, it didn't work. Overall, Orton's time with the Wyatts won't be looked back on too fondly. No. Sure, there were some bright sparks, like the matches with Luke Harper, mm -hmm. as well as Orton winning Rest the Royal peace. Rumble and then the WWE title at WrestleMania. But all in all, the storyline lasted longer than it needed to. Fans would have preferred to see Orton get another shot at Brock Lesnar, while Facts. for Bray, a feud with Luke Harper likely would have had more legs given their built-in story. Number nine, Rated RKO, 2006-2007. This was... made the jump back to... Rule. Man, this was... a Man, I love their team, man. And when they joined Rated RKO, I loved it. Oh, that was good. That was a cool pairing, boy. In the middle of 2006, Love Rated up with RKO. Edge to form Rated RKO. The two were paired together to act as credible opponents for DX, mm -hmm. resulting in a memorable feud during which Orton and Edge captured the world tag team titles. How the hell can those two men stand there? Oh, it was came so to good. a premature end after Triple H tore his quad at New yep. Year's Revolution 2007. Then, after dropping the tag belts to the team of Shawn Michaels and John Cena, mm -hmm. Rated RKO began to fizzle out, with the two splitting for good following a singles match against each other on Raw. This came the night after they wrestled in an epic fatal four-way for the WWE Championship at Backlash. Contact. Yo, this was such a good match, bro. <laughs> Orton and Edge both had big personalities. Their characters meshed together well in the beginning, but it was only a matter of time before their egos clashed. It didn't lead to a pay-per-view singles match, though, as Edge was moved to SmackDown following mm -hmm. injuries to Mr. Kennedy and The Undertaker. The run with Edge benefited Orton as it allowed Randy to mix it up against Triple H and Shawn Michaels again, that shit with was, Orton an even better that. wrestler than he was two years prior. Man, I love that. Rated RKO is a... It was short-lived, but it was it was great, man. Love that, that pairing. That actually worked for a little bit, man. What the hell is this? During the feud, Orton's history with both wrestlers was played up, which became mm -hmm. even more relevant when Orton worked against both Hunter and Sean in a singles feud the next year. Rated RKO had great chemistry together yeah. on screen, while behind the scenes, Edge helped keep Randy in check after the tough year Orton had just endured. Rated RKO's run was short, <laughs> and while it did lose some steam after Triple H's injury, the team created some great television. <laughs> oh 
Oh my god, that was so good. <laughs> they were so And their pairing rogue. was Keen steering Orton back in the right direction after the problems he'd been experiencing in his personal life. Number eight, Apex Predator, 2010 mm -hmm. to 2013. After a feud with fellow Legacy members, Rose and DiBiase, mm -hmm. Orton continued his face front, deciding to change his look to freshen things up. The Viper stopped wearing wristbands for a few months, a look that surprised fans seen as how odd Randy looked with nothing on his arms. 2010 wasn't a great year for the WWE, and the same could be said for Orton. <laughs> Yeah. He remained consistent in the ring, but from a promo and character perspective, there was nothing to write home about. The same can be said for the feuds he was in. Orton was over as a face, but he once again lacked that killer instinct and vicious nature that made him so great as a heel. Mm -hmm. And given some of the horrendous things he did as a heel, it was going to be hard to top this as a face. However, yeah. in 2011, Orton was able to find a greater balance between his characters. The punt kick was brought back due to necessity. Yep. Since Randy had to fight off an entire stable on his own in Nexus during his feud with CM Punk. And as we'd seen in the years prior, in order to hit the punt, Orton had to go to that place in his head yeah. where the voices were. The menace was what? back, this time as a baby face. <laughs> bro, I ain't gonna lie to you. Bro, when he started hearing them voices in his head, and what, what made it somewhat work in a sense is because we saw Randy at his most vicious, evil point. When he's out here punt kicking the McMahons, kissing Stephanie McMahon, like he was mega ultra rogue. We seen him at his worst and he was just taking people out. So to see him as a baby face, but then he would tap into that, people like that. People want to cheer for you. Like, like I've said before, the anti-hero. He was the anti-hero. He would kick you in the skull. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Before a good cause. Oh man. <laughs> Do not punt him. It made sense as this was the only way the Apex Predator was going to be able to take out Nexus. From the deranged look on Randy's face, you could just tell when the voices were taking over. The build-up to each punt was truly epic as all oh, picked off each Nexus member one by one, week by week, until Punk was the only one left. Last week, and now, and now Tunga. <laughs> we wouldn't see Orton snap like this again until his feud with Christian in the summer. Yep. Christian again! Oh. This was a great feud, the feud bro. had been very much one-sided on Orton's behalf until the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. There, the stipulation was such that Orton could lose the world. Ooh, I remember this. <laughs> when he spit in his face, I was like, oh, oh, he's going to that place again, mama. Oh, he's hearing voices and it's about to go crazy. I remember this. Oh, he, this. I'm with you, Randy. Someone spit in my face. It's up and it's stuck. I'm sending you to the gulags. Well, title via disqualification. Oh. Previously, Christian had lost the title match to Orton, despite the fact Captain Charisma's foot was under the rope during the deciding cover. This led to Christian turning heel and constantly demanding one more match. match. At Money in the Bank, Christian riled up Randy so much to the point where Orton hit a low blow, which caused the DQ. You gotta calm down, Randy. Beep. The fact that being spat on was the final straw for Orton was fitting, given the countless legends Orton had to spit in the face of mm -hmm. as the legend killer. The feud with Christian played on Orton's past struggles to control <laughs> his anger. Christian spitting in the Viper's face was enough to send Orton over the edge, as he absolutely destroyed Christian yep. following the conclusion to their match at Money in the Bank. <laughs> In the following weeks, Christian continued to try and make the Viper lose his cool. It was brilliant to see Orton unleash this side of his character. Yes. It's something the company can always go back to and have since done following this. We all know the Viper can strike at any moment, <laughs> but it's rarer to see the more sinister side of Orton. It's the violent, great. sadistic menace with anger management issues that we get to see only when the story calls for it. It's starting to make me angry. In 2011, we saw the best version of Orton as a babyface. He was forced to channel the voices in his head in order to end Nexus once and for all. Then during his fantastic feud with Christian, oh, we would again was... see just what happens when you send the Viper over the edge. Oh, no. oh, man. Regardless if he's face or heel, when Orton is made to go to that place, it's, no one can stop him. And there is great. no telling the amount Bink. of damage he can do. <laughs> it was evident in 2011, not to mention 2009 and 2020, but more on those years later. Number uh, seven, the authority. 2013 oh. to 20. 
2015. Mm -hmm. After a forgettable 2012 and first part of 2013, things picked up for Randy when he won the mm -hmm. Money in the Bank ladder match. Orton successfully cashed in his Money oh, in the Bank contract man. at SummerSlam 2013, following Daniel Bryan's victory against Such John Cena. Triple H would turn heel by pedigreeing Bryan, allowing Orton to pick up the scraps to become the new WWE champion. The next night on Raw, the authority would officially be born, with yep. Orton and Triple H cementing their heel turns. This began Daniel Bryan's yep. memorable chase for the WWE title, with Orton and the authority being the biggest obstacles in Bryan's way, as they yep. constantly held him down. Orton in many ways took a back seat here, despite being champion, as every Raw would begin with a Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Yeah, it really, if you really want to be honest, it, it wasn't even about Triple H. I mean, about Randy Orton, even though he had the title. It was more so about triple h and stephanie and i think a lot of people had criticism that every fucking raw started with them but at the same time you knew people was there to see them get their their comeuppance people were there to see daniel bryan overcome them and honestly it, it to me it 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 definitely was a rendition of stone cold and vince mcmahon it's just in a different, wrapped up in a different package. Daniel Bryan versus the Authority versus Triple H and Stephanie. And it worked. It worked. And it's one of the greater storylines WWE has done um, quite some time. The recent one, obviously, with the Bloodline, that's probably been the best thing since as well. So man promo Orton was positioned as the face of WWE while Bryan was considered a B-plus player. Oh, this you is... are a B-plus. The two Ooh. headline numerous pay-per-views, although both the dusty finish at Night of Champions and then the non-finish at Battleground, left fans demanding refunds. Daniel, look out, look out! Look at Randy Orton now! Put down outside the ring! Big Show's insertion in the feud didn't help matters, especially no. given the fact that Show even challenged Orton for the WWE title at Survivor Series, while Bryan was positioned in a feud against the Wyatts. Yeah. Orton was able to defeat the Big Show, bringing back the punt kick for one night only. The problem was that the punt was nowhere near as powerful this time around, given Big Show was able to wrestle the next night without issue. Yeah. Orton's character during this period wasn't as much of a savage like he was previously, and would be again in the future. This meant the punt didn't have as much impact since it didn't fit Orton's persona as the corporate champion he didn't yeah. need to go back to that sick place during this period as the authority could give him anything he wanted ensuring he stayed on top as a member of the authority autumn was a sellout linking back up with his former fierce rival triple h mm -hmm. in order to get back to the top and stay there hunter and stephanie did the brunt of the talking while randy represented their vision of what a top star should be the fact that daniel bryan was the complete opposite of this helped make the story yep, so thrilling that's the what fans made it didn't work want to see anyone else but bryan as the mm -hmm. wwe champion but it would take some more time before the company eventually changed direction. Before that could happen, Orton met his old rival, John Cena, defeating John in a unification match for both the World Heavyweight and WWE titles at TLC 2013. In the build-up to the match, Cena called out Orton for being handed everything, yet still making mistakes and being lazy. You've had behavior problems in the ring. You've had behavior problems outside the ring. Their rematch at the Royal Rumble was panned by the live crowd due to the fans being yeah. tired of both characters. Yeah. While the audience's demand to see Daniel Bryan in the title picture was intensifying more and more, the fans would finally get their wish at WrestleMania 30. But Daniel Bryan featured in a triple threat match against oh, Champion man, Orton bro. and Royal Rumble winner Batista. I still... Uh, we should have had that feeling for WrestleMania this year, man. It should have been that, that euphoric crowd eruption feeling. We didn't get that, but... Once again, this is still one of my favorite WrestleManias. One of my favorite WrestleMania main events. Take me back, bro. Take me back. I wish I was doing YouTube then. If I was doing YouTube then, oh, y'all would have seen me lose my shit. I would have went insane. I went insane watching this main event. So fun, bro. Brian had to defeat Triple H first in order to secure his place in the main event, which he subsequently won to become the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Following WrestleMania, fans were treated to the return of Evolution as the faction mm. went to war with the And this was good too. Fantastic matches. Oh Evolution my God, this Ambrose, was good. Rollins and Reigns in a huge way. And Orton would continue to elevate the younger wrestlers during his singles feuds mm -hmm. with Reigns and Rollins. Roman Reigns ahead of Steve Spears. This is so good, bro. The latter of which led to Orton leaving the authority and becoming a babyface again. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the most famous moment of this face run took yep. place at WrestleMania 31, <laughs> when Orton delivered one of the greatest ever RKO's to Seth Rollins. <laughs> A 
strong start to life as a face, was followed up with a bland feud with Sheamus. Mm -hmm. Orton later suffered a shoulder injury in the fall of 2015 that would keep him out of action for nine months. Number six, RK Bro, 2021 to 2022. Following mm. WrestleMania 37, Orton was paired together with Matt Riddle in what started out as an odd couple tag team, but as the weeks and months it progressed, got over, they began bro. to develop amazing chemistry together. As a team, the two created some very entertaining television, with the Viper warming up to Riddle more and more the longer mm -hmm. they were a team. I don't know what planet you're from. I'm from Earth. Shut up. <laughs> Riddle was finally given some decent material to work with, while we got to see a different side of Orton. <sighs> You could just tell how much fun they were having on screen together. Orton even credits his partnership with Riddle as having revitalized his career to the point where Orton was having some of the most fun he's ever had working with Riddle. And I have never had this much fun as I'm having right now in this ring with my partner. At the end of 2021, RK oh, Row were arguably the highlight of Raw. No, they were the hottest thing. And we knew at some point randy was going to be randy and we were waiting for it I, I man i was waiting for when randy turned because i think that could have really elevated matt riddle even more to have him have faced this real big adversity someone that actually he got real close with the fans love their 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 chemistry only for randy to turn on because it, it's randy it only makes sense we were waiting on it i just didn't know when and then he got injured man well, he had to, you know, well, he had to take some time off to, you know, get surgery and stuff like that, so. Every week, they featured in numerous hilarious segments, some of which featured inside references relating to both men's use of marijuana. There are exactly 28 grams in one ounce. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's it! Orton and Riddle won the tag team titles twice, wrestling numerous fantastic matches against the likes of the Street Profits and the Alpha Academy. RK Bro's tremendous run sadly came to an end when Orton was forced to take a step away from the ring due to a serious back injury. Yeah. Orton and Riddle had a very memorable run together. What began as a thrown together tag team soon blossomed Worked. into a versatile duo that complemented each other so well. And I want you to have this. Orton was the perfect straight man to Riddle's laid-back stoner character. <laughs> the fact that Orton also loved to secretly get stoned made this even better. <laughs> Two seconds to take this off my head. One. Their segments were beloved by fans because of just how funny RK Bro's act was. Then once the bell rang, Orton and Riddle put in a hell of a show, yeah, wrestling man. consistent, high-quality matches week in, week out. Number five, the age of Orton, 2007 mm. to 2008. In 2007, Orton began to show a more dark side to his character. A key element of this darker turn was Randy's use of the punt kick. Yep. It was suggested by Arn Anderson, who believed a straight boot to the skull was simple yet devastating. Come on, come on, come on, oh my come on, God. Go! <laughs> so it went beyond good. being just a wrestling move. It was sold and put over so well. The punt felt like a downright criminal assault. Anyone that I, hit that's why it worked. It was so simple because if you really think about it, if you really think about it, just from a uh, a street fight setting in a real world setting, if you run at full speed and someone is doesn't realize they're about to get kicked and you kick somebody in their skull at full speed there's a good chance they will be concussed there's a good chance you could damn near seriously hurt that person to the point where they could die from a, a, a traumatic head injury like that that's why it looks so good in in the sense of the wrestlers would sell it you wouldn't see them for weeks and it made sense you got punted in the head at full speed you should not be on the show next week <laughs> Hit with it was taken off TV afterward as the punt kick quickly became Orton's most brutal weapon. It oh. not only helped him win matches, but it gave such a twisted edge to his character. Orton was fast becoming a violent hero. I After love this. Numerous wrestlers on the shelf using the punt, Orton was ready to fight for the WWE Championship oh, at SummerSlam yeah. 2007 he against the man who John was Cena's dad. rival, John Cena. This was the first pay-per-view match in their legendary feud. They were fresh opponents, and as the two faces of the ruthless aggression era, they were eager to tear the house down. Cena evaded the punt to hit the FU and capture the win. But this was only the start of a feud that was about to become very personal. Yeah. The night after SummerSlam, Orton performed one of his most heinous Yeah, acts this was cold, bro. punting John Cena's <laughs> father in the head. It was one of the best punt kicks of all time, oh as you could just feel the impact. Oh my God. Orton added insult to injury by defeating Cena's dad in a match on Raw a few weeks later. But Cena Sr. got his revenge at Unforgiven by giving yep. Randy a taste of his own medicine. <laughs> I remember when John was kicked him. Kick the son of a bitch. <laughs> 
Cena and Orton's feud was put on hold before Orton could get his big win. As Cena suffered a pectoral injury mm -hmm. during a match with Mr. Kennedy, Orton punished Cena afterward in an angle that inadvertently acted as a way of writing Cena off television mm -hmm. to heal from his injury. Oh. Cena then vacated the WWE Championship, but Orton was able to capture it for himself at no mercy mm -hmm. by defeating the recently returning Triple H in a last man standing match. The age of Orton was here, and now by unlocking such a devastating side to his character, and with the punt kick in his it arsenal, so Orton good. would go on to have one of the strongest ever title runs. His failed first world title run was a distant memory. This yeah. was a different, more nefarious yeah. Randy Orton. He still had elements of the legend killer in him, but Randy was able to combine that with a new mean streak that would only oh. get wilder throughout the two years. Years. What? Orton went into WrestleMania 24 as WWE champion and came out of the show with the title still in possession, mm -hmm. becoming one of the few heels to achieve such a feat at the show of shows. Orton was now more opportunistic. He was slowly transitioning into more of a predator, while the voices in his head just couldn't be ignored. Number four, return to SmackDown 2005 to 2006. Orton cemented his heel turn in the spring of 2005 yep. by RKOing Stacey Keebler. Randy had set his sights on The Undertaker in a bid to kill another legend and break yep. The Undertaker's WrestleMania undefeated streak. Great match. I will defeat The Undertaker. This began a classic rivalry that spawned four great matches. The mm. feud also saw the return of Randy's father, Cowboy Bob Orton. Cowboy Bob helped Orton defeat Taker twice. He helped add to Orton's presentation and gave the legend killer a different dimension as it would have been difficult to buy Orton beating The Undertaker yeah. multiple times on his own at this stage of his career. The highlight of the Orton-Taker rivalry came inside Hell in a Cell at yeah. Armageddon when Orton took the dead man to the limit but ultimately came up short. I've never seen anyone do that! Are you kidding me? The Phenom may have went over on the night, but Orton certainly got over as a result. The mm -hmm. feud with Taker did wonders in elevating Orton, who was now rejuvenated, following a stuttering first world title reign. Oh, come on now, come on now! Oh my god! Somebody get out of here! Oh my god! Damn it, Furnos! Randy once again channeled what made Jeez. him so good as the legend killer, turning it up even more. He was now more vicious and cunning, yeah. while his promos were taken up a notch. Evolution were in the past, and it was clear now more than ever before that Orton could hang with the very best in the business as a main eventer. At the start of 2006, Orton set his sights on becoming a world champion for the second time. Randy feuded with that year's Royal Rumble winner, Rey Mysterio, mm -hmm. eventually defeating Rey to earn a place in the World Heavyweight title match at WrestleMania 22 that also featured champion Kurt Angle. Orton caught some of the most heat of his career during this time by disrespecting the late yeah. Eddie Guerrero numerous times. Eddie's down there in hell! Orton came up short at WrestleMania, but continued his feud with Kurt Angle. Orton battled with a number of disciplinary and personal issues during this era, from showing up late to shows due to excessive partying Damn. to defecating in wrestlers' bags as a joke. Things came to a head when Orton was suspended for 60 days for smoking marijuana. During this time off, Randy attended anger management classes to tackle his problems. By the summer of 2006, Orton was back on the Raw brand where he set out to kill his- My man was really hearing voices in his head. <laughs> his name legend to date. <laughs> Of Hulk Hogan. Oh, I love this. <laughs> Orton was brilliant here as he preyed on Hogan's daughter, Brooke. In order to anger the Hulkster, Orton lost to Hogan at SummerSlam in what turned out to be Hogan's final ever WWE match. On screen, Orton bounced back tremendously following a difficult first world title run, but outside of the ring, Randy began to lose mm -hmm. the run of himself. It's a credit to Orton's natural ability and God given talent that he was able to have such a brilliant 2005 and 2006, despite experiencing such turmoil behind the scenes. It's often been said that Orton doesn't truly know how great he is, and Randy being so good is why WWE continued to stick with him after all the missteps. And yeah. as we'll soon see, the moment Orton was able to get himself together would be the moment he would reach the top of the industry, as finally, there was nothing holding him back. Number three, Return of the Legend Killer, 2018 mm. to 2021. After a short hiatus in the middle of 2018, Orton returned by attacking Jeff Hardy at Extreme Rules. Yep. During this feud, we would begin to see the return of a more sadistic, bloodthirsty Orton. He yeah, I by forgot about this. And making use of the environment around him. Oh, oh that was <laughs> He was so brutal. From stretching Jeff Hardy's ear with a oh! screwdriver to twisting Tyler Dillinger's finger in the turnbuckle to guillotining Rey Mysterio twice with a steel chair. No, no, no. 
Orton even removed Mysterio's mask and carried it around like a trophy, the ultimate way of disrespecting a mask luchador. This mask doesn't deserve to be respected, it deserves to be erased. Orton was back to his old medicine yeah. way and it wouldn't be long until he reintroduced another old persona. But before that could happen, Orton's feud with Kofi Kingston from 2009 would be revisited, mm -hmm. this time with Kofi as the main eventer holding the WWE Championship. The feud featured numerous callbacks to their 2009 rivalry. Goes for the air mm. Kofi Kingston's Dude, jaw still in face. Critical <laughs> fashion to make it one-on-one -on -one with him and yes, Brian. Ultimately, we know the only time almost... With Kofi stating how Orton used his influence to hold Kingston down, Orton agreed, stating how he believed Kofi wasn't ready to be a main event star. You think that I used my influence to hold you back. You're damn right I did. It was great to see parts of Orton's past actions behind the scenes being incorporated in his on-screen character, and this only continued as Randy transitioned back into the legend killer persona. Orton's feud with the returning Edge in mm, 2020 was when was Randy good. really began to tap into this his promo was good. ability to the point where they were at the very top level. Orton was what? doing some of his best work as a character <laughs> while still being that sadistic, cruel viper. Add to that the oh. return of Orton as the legend killer, and you have Randy at his very best. Randy! Oh my god, this With is With 2020 bro. being one of his standout years. And this is despite the fact that for the vast majority of the year, there were no fans in attendance at shows. Mm -hmm. This made Orton's promos and the segments where he punt kicked numerous legends so much more easy. Oh, uh, 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 the atmosphere and the tone made his words hit different. Fans really had to listen in. The yeah. way Randy would quietly whisper to the legends as they were down was tremendous. Yep. The fact that Orton could still elicit such an emotional reaction despite there being no it crowd. It's crazy he that he really was, he was killing legends again. <laughs> to how strong his work was during that period. Based on the year he'd been having, it was no surprise that Orton captured his first WWE Championship in three years by defeating Drew McIntyre inside Hell in a Cell. This feud really helped cement McIntyre as a main event star. The two men had some memorable promo exchanges mm -hmm. while their matches were top draw. With such mm -hmm. a strong 2020 nearly under his belt, it was a shame that things had to go downhill when Orton oh. went up against the Fiend. So awful that thinking about it brings back a host of bad memories. Facts. It's not fair to pin any of the blame on the wrestlers in this case, as the material they had to work with was so bad. It would be so hard for awful, anyone to make bro. it work. Props to the WWE for trying something different during the pandemic era, but most of it just fell flat. Rest assured, the feud with The Fiend was the worst television Orton has ever been involved in. Facts. It was a sour end to what was otherwise a stellar three-year period for the Legend Killer. Number two, Evolution and the birth of the Legend Killer, mm -hmm. 2003 to 2004. Orton returned from injury in 2003, joining the ranks of Evolution as one of the faction's future stars alongside Batista. While Ric Flair was the wise legend and Triple H the current top star, Orton quickly found his feet as a legend killer. Orton had first landed a job in the WWE because of his legendary father and grandfather. The business is in his blood. <laughs> Third generation superstar. He was now in a big time faction alongside a legend Which in Ric Flair. However, Orton made it his, his mission career. to disrespect and destroy those that came before him. He did this by attacking and literally spitting in the face of mm -hmm. numerous wrestling legends. Oh my God. Orton was the cocky, arrogant, and up and coming star that was destined for greatness. Yep. Countless legends fell at the hands of Orton as he continued to work his way up the ladder. Elevating the Intercontinental Championship along the way by holding the belt for 210 days. This run was special as it felt like a throwback to the days when the IC title was considered the workhorse belt that mm -hmm. wrestlers would hold before going on to win the WWF Championship. Orton consistently put in some strong performances in the ring, resting a very smooth, methodical style with no wasted motion. A style in which Orton continued to master the more experienced he became. Yep. Orton also established the RKO as his finishing move during this period. It was already a famous move, but Orton would soon take it to even in greater heights. Orton's first run as the Legend Killer is perhaps best remembered for his yeah. hardcore match against Cactus yeah. Jack for the Intercontinental Championship at Backlash 2004. Here it comes. Oh my god, this is such a. This was a star. This is. Bro, Mick Foley did the job for him here. He made him. He made him. He made him that guy. The type of punishment he was taking. Bro. Fantastic. It's a hardcore match, you know what I'm saying? But it was it was still fantastic because it showed that Randy can go to the depths 
<laughs> to hang with the best. Baking was... match if there ever was one. As both men pulled out all the stops oh. in a bona fide five star classic, Foley made Orton just like he had made Triple H four yep. years prior. Orton was still young, but the Foley match certainly put him on the map. Evolution gave Orton the platform to mix it up with legends of the past and stars of the present. Orton shook off the rookie tag and used his third generation lineage to fuel his cocky, egotistical character that Great ran backed up by becoming the legend killer. Get a look at greatness! Orton's sensational calendar year between the summer of 2003 to 2004 convinced the higher-ups that Randy was ready to become world champion. And although we've since learned that Orton wasn't ready to be the champion in 2004, the fact that the company put the title on him so soon is a testament mm -hmm. to how strong his original run as the legend killer was. Number one, <laughs> Legacy, 2008 mm -hmm. to 2010. A broken collarbone <laughs> suffered against Triple H at One Night Stand mm -hmm. in 2008 halted Orton's insane momentum. But by the end of the year, Orton had formed a new group with other sons of legend Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase. Things had come full circle for Orton. He started yep. out as a third generation young upstart where he was led by stars of the industry. Now Orton was the star and the leader of his own group with not one but two young wrestlers Bro, born from greatness. And it everybody. was Randy who would show <laughs> Rhodes and DiBiase the way just as Ric Flair and Triple H had done for him. With Legacy by his side, Orton was back and ready to make the oh. biggest impact of his career <laughs> thus far. It all began after a run-in with Stephanie McMahon <laughs> was, Vince demanding an apology great. from Orton who refused. Then, after he was about to be fired, oh Orton slapped God. and nearly kicked the chairman's head off his shoulders, giving Vince a legit concussion in the process. Oh, shit. Oh, wait, hold on. Orton immediately realized... Wait, wait, wait. Then, after he was about to be fired, Orton slapped and nearly kicked the chairman's head off his shoulders, giving Vince a legit concussion in the process. Oh, damn, he kicked this thing a real concussion. I may not agree with a lot of Vince McMahon's decisions and uh, the things that he uh, sometimes wants on television, but I cannot deny the dude, no matter what his age is, he, well, not recently, you know, as of recent years, but he was down to get somebody over in a spot, even if that meant for him to get injured. I remember he did the job for Kevin Owens with Kevin Owens head butting him and damn near busted him open legit. Like, that was crazy. He legit took that just to get Kevin Owens that much over in the sense, in the segment. And for him to take this, legitimately get a concussion, that's, that's fucking wild, bro. <laughs> Orton immediately realized what had just happened, but the damage was done. Orton went on to win the 2009 Royal Rumble to book his place in the main event of WrestleMania. He now had contractual power over the company. He demanded Stephanie fire him, stating that he couldn't be responsible for his actions due to having intermittent explosive disorder and therefore <laughs> could sue the WWE if they terminated him. Orton was essentially bulletproof. He couldn't be fired and now had a built-in excuse to wreak even more havoc thanks to the disorder. Shane McMahon was out to get revenge for what Orton yeah. had his father, but Shane O'Mac would also Beak. fall to the punt kick. <laughs> then, with a hysterical Stephanie McMahon pleading for answers, Orton struck her down with an RKO. Oh, this is so cold. <laughs> Orton had already made it personal with the immediate McMahon family, but after RKOing Stephanie, Randy now had to deal with Steph's husband, Triple H. <laughs> Hunter and Stephanie hadn't been established as husband and wife on television since yeah. 2002, meaning Orton had now made things so personal that yeah. storyline, there was no ignoring the torment Randy was causing. Oh, this is so good! <laughs> there was no limit to the lengths this version of Orton would go to. Oh, this was so good! He kissed his man's wife! After giving her a DDT. Oh, it was great. Oh, it was great. This is why it's so disappointing that the main event sucked because it shouldn't have been no hold barred. Anything goes. Let's go. It should have been anything. The Triple H pulled up to this nigga crib ready to give him the smoke. He pulled up to Randy Orton's crib storyline wise to give him the smoke. This shouldn't have been. No disqualification, anything goes, because this was personal. Oh my God. This meant wiping out non-wrestlers and now even women, Randy would do it. Orton even tried to punt kick Stephanie only for Shane to intervene. The McMahon mm -hmm. family have historically been the evil rulers who made their enemies' lives a living hell. It speaks to just how sick of a character Orton was that he could actually yep. get the fans to sympathize with a family Bro, that had done He so got people to actually care about the McMahons. That was in a sympathetic way, bro. So many terrible things. Triple H sought revenge <laughs> by making it personal with Orton's family as the game broke into Orton's home in a classic Raw segment. <laughs> 
such a the good The build answer. to their match at WrestleMania 25 was so thrilling that the eventual bout itself had a lot to live up to. Bro, the match, the build, this is, like I, I talked about on my video recently this week, the build up was so damn good. This build was great. It's just the match didn't, it, it, they, they should have just let them go all out. This doesn't need, me personally, if I'm going to your crib, I'm breaking into your home, you are RKOing my wife, you're trying to punt kick my wife, you kissed her on the lips while she was unconscious, you knocked out my brother-in-law, you knocked out my father-in-law, this is no longer just about the championship, this is personal. So it should be bigger than just the championship storyline wise. You, it needs to be no holds barred. I'm, I'm here to end you. And if I take the championship with me, that's awesome. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> But it didn't help that their clash was completely overshadowed by the sensational Undertaker versus and that Shawn Michaels too. match that Th went that on before too, yeah. it. It was impossible yeah. to follow, despite yeah. how awesome Orton and Triple H's feud had been. In the end, their match fell flat, but fans will also remember how Orton terrorized the McMahons. After WrestleMania, Orton oh. regained the WWE Championship, and he was now ready to resume his feud with John Cena that ended prematurely the year prior. This time, Orton walked into SummerSlam as the champion, as opposed to the challenger, where he would finally get his singles win over Cena. Their feud continued throughout the fall with the two yeah. men trading title victories starting with the awesome I quit mm -hmm. match and breaking point I quit, I quit. Yeah. Yeah. And then a match inside Hell in a Cell. The feud culminated in a one hour Iron Man match mm -hmm. at Bragging Rights that John Cena won, with the stipulation being that Orton couldn't challenge for the WWE Championship again until Cena lost it. As a result, Orton stepped out of the title picture to feud with Kofi Kingston. Yeah. The feud helped elevate Kingston. However, the WWE failed to follow up on his newfound momentum. The moment where Orton yelled out, Stupid, stupid, to Kofi in the middle of the ring signaled the end of Kingston's push. In yep. 2010, cracks began to form in Legacy as Orton began to transition into turning babyface. The group had shown minor signs of dissension in the past, but now there was no doubt that Whoop. the faction was on the rocks. Just... Oh my this God. was clear when Cody Rhodes cost Orton a chance to regain the WWE title at the Royal Rumble by getting Randy DQ'd after Rhodes hit Sheamus in view of the referee. Rhodes and DiBiase officially turned on Orton at the Elimination Beep. Chamber, setting up a triple threat match at WrestleMania 26. Crossroads. Orton picked up the win with a punt kick yeah. and RKO combo on both men. Orton was now a popular babyface for the first time in five years. Mm -hmm. This was interesting given he had just come off the most evil heel run of his career. Yeah. Sure, he was the most Beak. hated heel in wrestling in 2009, but his work was so amazing that it led to the fans wanting to cheer Orton. Throughout Orton's illustrious Hall of Fame career, oh his 2009 God, run gave bro. us the greatest version of Randy Orton. It was the culmination of a spectacular story oh that my had been God, building for some time bro. and will ultimately go down as Orton's very best work. Randy Orton oh, yeah. was destined to follow in his family's <laughs> footsteps, becoming a third generation genetically this gifted is great, wrestler man. with an inherent ability that was further developed and built <clears throat> upon, allowing Orton to become an era-defining generational talent who is celebrated by fans and greatly respected by his peers. Orton quickly rose through the ranks, starting out as an upstart rookie before becoming a legend killer, then a viper, and now a legend in his own right. And that Batch. brings us to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed hey. the video, be sure to give it a like man. and subscribe. Uh, I gotta go ahead and do this live. Definitely giving this a like. Link to the original video down below. This was great. This was fantastic, man. <laughs> this was fun to watch. Go back down memory lane. Ah, oh, this is so good. This is why it, it's so unfortunate to hear that the doctors are saying he may have to hang it up for good or he shouldn't come back to wrestling. I hope that's not the case because the guy, he's truly fantastic, man. Randy Orton <laughs> is one of the greatest to ever do it and I hope he is able to come back if he possibly can but if he can't he is giving us a legendary career that we can always go back and look at and just be like man I remember when I was there when he did this or said this like ah oh, man so comment down below let me know what's your favorite version of Randy Orton let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel road to 150k and i'm still here on the speed of youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see you on the next one peace